Talking about the cord reflexes, another very important type of the cord reflex is the Golgi tendon organ reflex, which is actually associated with muscle tone instead of muscle length, and that is why it is also very important. And in this lecture, that is what's our focus going to be because we're going to talk about the Golgi tendon organ, how it works, what is the reflex which is caused by it, and also we're going to talk about the other reflexes. We're also going to talk about the flexor or the withdrawal reflex and also the cross extension reflex. We are also going to take a look at the autogenic and reciprocal inhibition. So what are Golgi tendon organs and how are they different from the muscle spindle? The first point is that in the location. So Golgi tendon organs are not located in the muscles, instead they are located in the muscle tendon unit which is located at the attachment site of the muscle as you can see here. And they are not concerned with the uh, sensing of the muscle length but they are concerned with the sensing of the muscle tone. So increase in the muscle tone actually uh, stimulates the Golgi tendon organ and as I already mentioned they are located in muscle tendons. Transmit information about tendon tension or rate of change in te of tension. So once again simple if you are talking about the tension so this is the static response of the Golgi tendon organ and if you are talking about the rate of change in tension so this, this in this we are going to talk about the dynamic uh, response of the Golgi tendon organ. So these are actually encapsulated sensory receptors through which muscle tendon fibers pass. So these are located in the muscle tendon not in the uh, muscle belly itself. So they are stimulated when the small bundle of muscle fibers is tensed by contracting or stretching of the muscles and the sarcomeres. And when there is an isometric contraction, so there is actually a static response which is created by the Golgi tendon organ because it is actually uh, measuring or sensing the increase in the tension. But when there is actually a movement as well and there is a rapid change in the tension then it is known as dynamic response and it only occurs when there is a change in tension and if there is a stagnant or a stationary tension so it, the static response would be actually present there and not the dynamic response. So let's take a look how actually this occurs. So for example uh, there is uh, for example if we talk about uh, this so here we have an increased tension uh, in the muscle. Uh, let's suppose there is very much excessive contraction of the quadriceps as if for example in this figure and this increased tension in the quadriceps actually results in the activation of the Golgi tendon organ because that senses the muscle tone or the change in muscle tone or tension. So because of the activation of the Golgi tendon organ the sensing neuron is excited and this sense in neuron either terminates on the interneuron and then terminates on the motor neuron or it terminates only on the uh, motor neuron directly. So it actually does two things. So it actually results in actually activation of the one alpha motor neuron and inhibition of another alpha motor neuron. So here we can see we have two interneurons. This one is the inhibitory interneuron which is actually uh, causing inhibition of the alpha motor neuron which is actually supplying the agonist or the quadriceps in this case. Whereas the excitatory interneuron is actually stimulating the anterior motor neuron which supplies the muscle opposite to it. So this would result in integrating central or sensory neuron activation inhibitory neuron as well as excitatory neuron which then results uh, in the motor neuron to antagonistic muscle being excited and the motor neuron to the agonistic muscle to be inhibited. So what happens is that the effectors for example in this case are the muscles. So muscle of attached to the same Golgi tendon organ which is the quadriceps muscle in this case is inhibited to relieve the tension and once again the antagonistic muscle is activated to increase the tension in the opposite muscle so to relieve the tension in the agonist muscle. Now negative feedback regulation. What happens is that when a muscle contracts there is a negative feedback which inhibits additional contractions and prevents damage due to increased tension or even fatigue. So 
here we can see so this is the sensing neuron from the Golgi tendon organ for example there is increased tone in this flexor muscle now in this case it is the biceps so this actually goes there and it actually excites the anterior motor neuron for the antagonistic muscle which is the triceps and it inhibits the anterior motor neuron for the agonistic muscle which is the biceps in this case and thus relaxing the agonist and decreasing the resting tone of that muscle thus preventing damage and fatigue now this brings us to two different things one is the autogenic inhibition and one is the reciprocal inhibition so autogenic inhibition is actually associated with the golgi tendon organ what happens is that when we actually isometrically contract a muscle this activates the golgi tendon organ and the 1b afferent fiber which then activates the anterior neuron to the antagonistic muscle but inhibits the anterior motor neuron to the same muscle thus causing inhibition of the same muscle from which the sensory input was received so this is known as autogenic inhibition on the other hand we have the reciprocal inhibition which is responsible uh, in case of the muscle spindle so here we have a muscle spindle so here we have an agonist muscle so this muscle is being stretched so what happens is that the muscle spindle is being lengthened and activated and this sends the information to the spinal cord where the motor neuron for the antagonistic muscle is inhibited which results in relaxation of the muscle opposite to the receptor and this is known as reciprocal inhibition this concept of autogenic and reciprocal inhibition is also used in the management of uh, muscular dysfunctions in by using a technique which is known as muscle energy technique such as post isometric relaxation and post facilitation stretch techniques now another type of reflex which is known as the flexor reflex so what happens in this reflex for example there is any type of painful stimuli to the hand so what happens is that when there's a painful stimuli to the hand, for example, a, let's suppose a very hot cup of tea. So this painful stimulus travels from the sensory neuron to the spinal cord. And then it inhibits the antagonistic muscle, which is the extensor, and it activates or excites the agonistic muscle, which is the uh, flexor here so that is why it is known as flexor reflex and because of the activation of this flexor the hands move away from the uh, painful stimulus and thus this is known as flexor reflex sometimes it is also known as withdrawn reflex and in withdrawal reflex there's not just the flexors involved there are also abductors and other let's suppose uh, flexors of the elbow abductors of the shoulder and extensors of the shoulder involved to bring the hand in a more withdrawing position from the painful stimuli so that was flexor reflex and withdrawal reflex but there's another reflex which is occurring at the same time and with associated with the flexor reflex so in this reflex what happens is that let's suppose there is painful stimuli from the flexor uh, from the let's suppose the hand and this painful stimuli travels from this sensory neuron to the spinal cord and then this while the interneuron travels towards the opposite side and activates the antagonist which is the extensor and inhibits the agonist which is the flexor so a painful stimuli at the let's suppose a right hand in this case would lead to the activation of the extensors or the triceps on the opposite hand now this would re result in for example if I went like this and that extensor would actually uh, cause further movement of the body away from the painful stimuli and that is known as the crossed extensor reflex so that was all about the Golgi tendon organ uh, and its reflexes as well as the reflexes associated with autogenic and reciprocal inhibition as well as the flexion and the cross stretch reflex. So I hope you learned something new out of it. So keep on watching skydive.com for more lectures like this. Thank you very much.